In the onboarding form that you receive in your welcome email or from your Ectaris sales representative, just complete your details. With the password, you have to be careful. This will require at least one capital, one lower caps character, one number and one special character like exclamation mark, at sign or other special characters. The next step is your database name that's important. Here typically use a short name, maybe your company name, for example, just company. The legal name is your legal company name and then country and telephone um, as you like. So here you see now your Ectaris admin account and that is the name of your database and then at Ectaris on Microsoft.com. So this is an Active Directory account. You can then subsequently add your own Active Directory accounts, but the admin will use this account. So typically it's a good idea to just copy and paste this because very soon you will be logging on with this account. So we can now press next. Then this is just marketing details. And then you press submit. So you can see here, the process was successfully initiated. You will receive now an email to confirm your email address. You just click on the activation link and then the activation link will provision your environment with your Azure SQL database. After you have received your welcome email, you just follow the logon link and log on with your Actaris username, which is the database name at Actaris on Microsoft.com. And you just log on to the account. There will also be a setup of a backup email address. So the Microsoft Active Directory will ask you for a backup email address. Here you can use your normal email address and then send a verification code to this and you just type in the verification code and this has configured a backup email address in case you lose access to your main email. And once you have gone through this, you will log on to the Ectaris Modeler. The Ectaris Modeler is your admin environment where you configure your data sources the first step here is to add your IP address to a safe list. We have obviously a fairly high focus on security and are only allowing users to the database whose IP address is added to the list. This is only relevant for the admins that are accessing the database directly. For users in Power BI or users that are not accessing the database directly, they don't need to add their IP address to the list. To connect your accounting system, just go to integration, click on add at the particular accounting system, authenticate with your accounting system, and this will automatically create your data model with six months of data. Subsequently, you can add more data or additional companies. So once you've added the IP address to the safe list, added your company or companies, you can just go to the downloads area. Here you can see now all the Actaris downloads from the Excel admin installation, the Power BI visuals, some demos, and also Power BI standard reports. And the one that you will typically need for zero is the zero Power BI template in the import mode. And you can just download this. We can now just open this Power BI template. This is a Power BI template file. So here we can see now the initial configuration. So you only have to go through this once. And really the only thing that you have to configure is the database name. And the database name is visible in the modeler. So, and the database name is the name that you can see here is typically the name of your company and the prefix AP underscore. So the only thing that you have to do for the Power BI configuration, enter your database name here.
change the base currency if required. And the final one is the setting for the group country. So here you can just put in your country name. This will be used as a starting point for the map visualizations. Now just click on load. So the first one is just a confirmation. This is for the exchange rates that we also support in the template. So we automatically load the current exchange rate. So here the only thing is to connect. So here we see now a very important step uh, that to uh, take into account. Um, you need to use a Microsoft account, not database and not Windows. So make sure Microsoft account is selected here and then click on sign in and sign in with your uh, Ecteris username. So typically your company name at Ecteris on Microsoft.com and your password. And this is it. Now just click on connect. So all your Ecteris table will now get loaded. We can see a few here for finance, for the GL transactions, invoices for the invoices and a few other ones. And you can even add more when you're in Power BI. So after you've clicked OK on the currency table and connected with your Microsoft account, you'll see now the template for zero and a variety of reports. As we have here a financial report um, with filters. For example, if you had added multiple organizations, you can either see the consolidated results of all organizations, or you can look at a particular one. You can see everything here updates automatically. We have filters that handle the tracking category. So if you just want to see the results for a particular tracking category, you can do that. Or we'll switch back to all. Then a few special things. If you move the mouse pointer, for example, to this report here, I can see the underlying transactions. This changes depending where you move. You can always filter. So all of these visuals, as they're called in Power BI, filter each other. So if we have here the revenues, I get now everything here filtered on revenues. If you click somewhere outside, it goes back to the normal mode. Um, similar reports we have for sales. I can see now my sales. Again, if you have, um, if you move the mouse pointer, you can see the underlying transactions. If you click on, on an object, for example, October, you can see what happened in October. And everything here can be obviously edited. So if we click on a visual here, I can see the definition. So we're showing here the items from the invoice table in zero, the group currency invoices as the value. So this is the value in the group currency and the tool tip show the line amount. So if I move the mouse pointer there, I can see now the line amount and the group currency amount. Um, the key tables here are finance, which uh, contains all the general ledger transactions, in particular the journals, the automated and the manual journals. What we are doing here is we are making it easier for the end users. So this is not exactly the, the same structure as in, in zero, but we're optimizing it for analytics purposes and combining a few tables together and then also adding calculations, for example, for any balance measure. We're calculating the balances automatically from the movement and with the invoices, the other main table, we're adding the incoming, outgoing and credit notes. So again, to have everything in one table as opposed to different ones. Here we also have a folder for what's called the measures. So the measures that have actually values in them as opposed to the other fields that have just details in them. Like for example, the postal code here, we have the values, for example, the group currency value, the value in the local currency, and then a lot of other things like average sales and calculations. And these are done in DAX. So it's typically a good thing to make yourself familiar with if you want to work in Power BI. So we're calculating, calculating here the average sale and dividing total revenue by the number of sales. So that's a DAX calculation. If we go to this one, this is probably something that we'll be using on, on a fair bit. So this is a typical financial statement where we are replicating a proper P&L structure in Power BI, so the users can uh, drill up and down from the PL statements. It calculates the subtotals correctly. 
and when we're moving here to the right, we can see here now we have the the value, the repo value, which is the group currency. We have the month, the previous month's variance and the percentage of sales. And if you click on a value here, you can see again the other visuals update. And I can see here now the transactions behind this value, which was only one here. So this is in group currency and this is in local currency. So this is it from the reports that are here. We also have the cash journals as a standard report, which shows all the tra cash transactions. We have a typical balance sheet where you can see your balance sheet details. And then these are the reports that are doing the, the details that we saw before. We call them drill down tables or tooltip tables. And if you want to create a new report in Power BI, you can just go to a new report here at the bottom, add a new report, and then just use the fields that you have in your tables to create a report. So for example, if I want to show the line amount, I can take this and I want to show this by region. I can take this here and now I can see this, the data here of the report and you can switch between all the different visualizations in, in Power BI. One that typically accountants often use is a, is a table. So here we have now a normal table. If you want to um, filter this, okay, for example, take the organization name. Um, now it's out of the box, it is a, it is a table. Um, but if we want to, we can switch that to a filter. It's now a filter. And here the users can now filter and you can see this automatically adapts to what I'm choosing here. What's quite um, important is the filters, how they are defined. So or typically the details for the visual are always in this area here, in the formal area. And here you can specify some details. For example, should this be a single select or will you allow multiples? So if I want to, for example, so this is not a single select. So if I switch here now, the other one deactivates. If you turn this off, um, we can select now multiple ones by holding down the control key. So now I can see the total of both or all three. And then you can also show an all select. So this allows you to quickly select all of them or unselect all of them. So this is just a quick introduction. We specialize in supporting our clients with their specific Power BI needs, adding other data sources, setting up the calculations, the reports that they need. So if you have any further questions, please contact us.